this lecture, we'll just take a quick look at the cycle index of the full permutation group. By this, I mean that we take G to be Sn, which we regard as a permutation group of uh, the set 1 to n. So it's all the permutations of the set 1 to n. So in order to do this, we need to compute how many permutations there are uh, with a given cycle decomposition. So uh, let's uh, do this computation. So let alpha be a partition of n, which we'll write in exponential notation. So an integer partition of n. So this means that uh, alpha has uh, 1 occurring a1 times, 2 occurring a2 times and so on. And uh, saying that it's a partition of n means that a1 plus 2a2 plus this is equal to n. Or we can write summation i belongs to p, i a i is equal to n. This is in any case a finite sum, but we don't want to worry about where it ends. So we'll just be lazy and write i belongs to p. Okay, so that's alpha. And we want to know how many uh, permutations there are with cycle type alpha. That means how many permutations are there of uh, uh, the n element set, which have a1, 1 cycles, a2, 2 cycles, a3, 3 cycles, and so on. So uh, I'll, I'll state the result and then prove it. The number of permutations with cycle type alpha as above is n factorial divided by product i in p. Now again, this would be a finite product i raised to ai, ai factorial. This will be a finite product because ai will be zero for all but finitely many i and those factors will also therefore be just equal to one and will not contribute anything to the uh, product. Uh, the proof is not very difficult. Uh, one way to think of it is uh, to uh, try to, uh, to, to, to draw a permutation with such a cycle decomposition and to see how you can fill in numbers into it. So for example, uh, let's just look at a permutation with a cycle type um, alpha equals uh, 1 raised to 0, 2 raised to 2, 3 raised to 1. Uh, in standard notation for uh, uh, partitions, uh, so, sorry, this is a partition. This is the partition 3, 2, 2. Okay, so it has 1, 3 cycle and 2, 2 cycles. So let me draw these. And uh, so I have 1. Maybe I'll draw these circles a little bigger. So here's a two cycle, here's another two cycle, and here's a three cycle. And now I have to put in the numbers uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 into these boxes. Uh, so let's just let me make it clear that this is a two cycle, this is another two cycle, and this is a three cycle. And so I have to put in the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 into these boxes. So I could put them like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But there are many other ways of doing this. For example, I could take uh, uh, these same uh, boxes and put in numbers somewhat differently. I could take any permutation uh, of uh, the numbers 1 to 7. And I could put, so for any sigma in S7, I could put sigma 1 here, sigma 2 here, sigma 3 here, sigma 4 here, sigma 5, sigma 6, sigma 7. So uh, there are, uh, you know, seven factorial different ways of doing this, but they do not all give rise to the same uh, to different permutations. Many of them give rise to the same permutation. So um, fill in. There are 
in factorial different ways of filling in the numbers 1 to n into a diagram representing a permutation with cycle type alpha. This is independent of alpha, but the ones which give rise to equivalent um, um, partitions are uh, actually, so what I could do for example is uh, instead of taking 5, 6, 7 here, I could uh, just uh, do something like uh, change this 5, 6, 7 to 5, 6, 7. So this would be a rotational uh, uh, symmetry in one of the cycles. Or I could even move the 5, 6, 7 by two blocks and I could put 5, 6, 7 like this. So here I would have three different ways of uh, putting the numbers, uh, still getting exactly the same permutation. Where I put the 5, 6 and 7, so long as rotationally they are in the same order, uh, gives rise to the same permutation. So for each i cycle, there are uh, i such choices. So number of, uh, so, so two permutations, give rise to the same, well, two different sigma, let's say. The same uh, permutation if, so one thing is you can uh, permute the cycles uh, uh, rotation of a cycle, rotate each cycle in uh, each i cycle in i different ways. And secondly, uh, I could take these two cycles and uh, put here 3, 4 and put there 1, 2 instead. And that would still be the same permutation. So the other is permute all cycles of the same size. So what we get is uh, we need to uh, divide by the number of such symmetries. And so therefore, number of permutations with cycle type alpha is equal to n factorial divided by, so for each i, I have um, i raised to a i. So for each i cycle, I have a factor i, they are a i i cycle, so that gives i raised to a i. And then uh, if I have a i i cycles, I can permute them in a i different ways, so a i factorial. As claimed. So uh, uh, that's the proof and now we are ready to compute uh, the cycle index polynomial for the symmetric group. It's convenient to introduce uh, some notation. Uh, this is standard notation Z alpha is defined to be the product I in P I raised to A I A I factorial. This Z, uh, this term comes from, uh, this notation comes from group theory. Z alpha turns out to be the centralizer, the order of the centralizer group of a permutation with cycle type alpha. And uh, hence the letter Z uh, coming from the German word for central. And uh, what we have is a uh, number of permutations with cycle type alpha is n factorial divided by z alpha. So what we get is that the 
cycle index polynomial is equal to sum over all. Uh, so this notation here means alpha is an integer partition of n. Uh, which is the same as saying that summation i a i equals n where alpha is of the form 1 raised to a 1, 2 raised to a 2 dot dot dot. So we get this. Uh, of course, we have to take a 1 over n factorial. Then we have n factorial over z alpha and then we have product i in p y i raised to a i. This is just from the definition of um, the cycle index polynomial, And so we can also write this as uh, this n factorial and this n factorial cancel out. So we get part sum over all partitions alpha in n uh, product i in p um, y i raised to a i i raised to a i a i factorial. Let's compute the polya polynomial that is used in the polya enumeration theorem. So for that we need to substitute um, yi for um, pi t1, t2, tk assuming k colors. So that's just t1 raised to i plus tk raised to i and what we get is the polya polynomial is the symmetric polynomial sum 1 over yeah, sum over alpha partition of n of uh, p alpha by z alpha where p alpha, remember, this is a uh, product i in p, p i raised to a i. You have a factor uh, p i for each i cycle. So this is the polya symmetric polynomial and uh, the coefficient. So here p alpha is a polynomial in the variables t1, t2, tk. It's a symmetric polynomial. And uh, the coefficient of um, t1 raised to mu1, tk raised to mu k is equal to, by the polya enumeration theorem, is the number of colorings of shape mu that means the color 1 is used mu 1 times, the color 2 is used mu 2 times and so on of the set N and uh, the number of equivalence classes under the symmetric group. But suppose you have two different colorings uh, where the colors uh, 1 through K are used the same number of times, you can always just, since the symmetry group here is the full symmetry group of all permutations, you can always patch or take a uh, take a permutation that takes all the col uh, vertices, uh, all the elements uh, with co the first color to all the elements of the first color in the second coloring, uh, any two colorings uh, with uh, the colors used the same number of times are going to be equivalent under the symmetric group. So this is just going to be one by the polya enumeration theorem. So here is an example where we actually know the left hand side of the polya enumeration theorem and we are using it to get glean some information about the right hand side which is this expression. And so what, what we are saying is that uh, this alpha in n p alpha z alpha is just the sum over all uh, mu 1 uh, mu k in n to the power k such that the sum of mu 1 plus mu k is equal to n t1 to the power mu 1 tk to the power mu k. 
that is the sum of all homogeneous uh, monomials of uh, degree n and this is called the complete symmetric polynomial of degree n in the variables t1 tk so you can take this as a definition this is called the complete symmetric polynomial of degree n in t1 tk so this symmetric polynomial just has all possible monomials of degree n, distinct monomials of degree n, each one occurring exactly once. And so we get this beautiful identity that sum over all partitions alpha of p alpha by z alpha is uh, actually just uh, the complete symmetric polynomial hn.